Let's talk about five things you can use around your house to assist in your self-defense. But before we do that, I'll let you know that we have a gun giveaway going on. It's happening right now and it's absolutely free, but guess what? It ends soon. So all you need to do is click that link in the description down below to learn which brand new gun you could win. There are things all over your house that you can use as let's call them improvised weapons. They're not immediately designed to be a weapon, but in a pinch you can use them. One of my favorites is the fire extinguisher. I don't know about you, but I have three or four fire extinguishers all around my house because I don't like fire. But have you ever thought that maybe you take your fire extinguisher and you spray the bad guy with the white foam or the purple powder, and then you hit him with the empty steel cylinder? So yeah, probably not as effective as a firearm, but you know what? I would not want to get a face full of firefighting foam or firefighting powder and then have somebody planting some impacts on my forehead when I broke into their house. A fire extinguisher is an excellent improvised self-defense weapon. It's going to make a big mess, but at that point, you're not worried about the mess. You're worried about making sure that this intruder doesn't hurt anybody coming into your house. Any other heavy objects, and I'm going to go right for the skillet. You know, we've seen that in the movies all the time, and I know movies aren't real, but somebody grabbing a skillet and whacking somebody, think about that. If you pick up a piece of stainless steel or cast iron, and that becomes another very good impact weapon, and it can also be used as a shield to help protect yourself from incoming punches or people swinging other stuff at you. Utilizing an improvised weapon like a skillet or, or a griddle or something like that um, works like I said, both as a shield and as an offensive tool. You can swing that, you can deflect with it, you can use it for striking different target areas and stop and think about this, you don't just always want to hit someone in the head because people instinctively protect their heads. When we get nervous, when we, when we panic, our hands come up, we're gonna protect our head. If you hit somebody in the shin or the knee with a piece of stainless steel, like a skillet, Man, you're going to put a world of hurt on them and definitely slow them down. So if you can get your hands on something heavy like that, make sure that you've taken a few practice swings and, and keep that in the back of your mind. Other things that can help with your self-defense are furnishings. Understand this. We're talking about barricades now. I've told you if you hear someone breaking into your house, let's say you're in your bedroom at night and you hear a noise out in the living room or out somewhere else, that instinctively we want to go and investigate that noise but i don't think that it's the safest possible thing for you to go and try to clear your house grab your gun so no get a piece of furniture barricade your door start giving verbal commands and get on the phone with 911. that is going to slow the person down if they're trying to get to you and if they're just robbing your house i know it sucks and i say just robbing your house but if you don't have to be in this fight for your life and they're just taking a TV and a computer and, and going on their way, don't get out there and get in that fight for your life. Barricade the door, call 911, a piece of furniture then really helps. And of course, the old standby kitchen knives. You know what? As a police officer, whenever I was going to a domestic incident, we never, never let people talk in the kitchen. We were making sure that we were not there where there was any sharp edged implements because you know what? A kitchen knife can do a hell of a lot of damage. And I, I've said it before, I'm more afraid of getting stabbed than I am of getting shot because it's tough to get a knife out of somebody's hands because they're holding on to the handle and you got to get a hold of the sharp edge. So um, I don't want to deal with that. But if you've got knives in your kitchen, those are things that you can then utilize to defend yourself. But understand, takes a little bit of training to use a knife effectively. Don't just be stabbing at somebody if you're using a knife to defend yourself. What you want to do is cut them on major muscle groups in the arms and in the legs. If you cut their legs, it reduces their movement. If you cut their arms, it reduces their ability to attack you. So just stabbing somebody in the stomach might cause them some severe pain, might slow them down a little bit, but they still have that ability to fight. So get some training if you're going to use a knife, but knives are always there as an option. And finally, let's talk about your kids' sporting goods. You know what? 
If you have a baseball bat around or a hockey stick or anything else that you can use as an impact weapon, I'm going to tell you to use that as an impact weapon. Again, some training and the style of how you're using this, you might not have room and it might not work well to take the big overhand swing when you're using that bat. But if you have a hockey stick or a baseball bat and you're just shoving it forward, using it as like a baton or I, I shudder to say this, like a spear using the stabbing motion to keep people at distance and then you finally get to the point where you can deliver a blow, don't just think you have to hit him in the head. You hit somebody on that IT band on their thigh, on the outside of their thigh with a baseball bat or a hockey stick, they're going down. They're going to stop moving for a few minutes and that's going to give you the opportunity to escape. Now again, these are all improvised weapons. They're improvised opportunities for what we're talking about in self-defense and you know the goal of self-defense is to cause enough dysfunction in your attacker that you can escape safely. So if you spray them with the fire extinguisher, you hit them with the skillet, you cut them with the kitchen knife, something helps you escape that's what you want to do. Use any implement you can to avoid harm. Want to know the three biggest mistakes when carrying a handgun? Then click on the video next to me to reveal all three mistakes. Mistake number two may shock you. Everybody has their own cardinal rules for what they're going to do when they're carrying a gun. But right now, I'm going to give you three things that you must never do 